From time to time, I show all of you a drawing or a design or a picture because I want to share my thinking with you. My goal has been able to give you something to look at. It's like a visual look at a concept or an idea, something I'd like you to think about when you're in school. This is the triangle that most of you saw last year. It shows how we want to do partnership at PBS. It's something I expect of you students at PBS when you're being a team and partners with your fellow students, and we expect it of our parents too. This is the diagram that we talked about a year ago this month. Most of you might remember that range from high to low. For passion, for confidence, I talked about wanting all of you to be motivated learners and to go for it. Today's theme is agency. I'm not talking about an advertising agency, which is like an advertising company. I'm not talking about being a free agent, like in professional sports. Instead, I want to talk about student agency. For us, T oh yes, that's right, see? So for students and student agency, this is essential for your learning, and so I need you to listen up and really pay close attention. Student agency is very simply this. It is your own drive, and it is your own passion. Your own drive and your own passion for your learning. Student agency is key and essential to making sure that you are the inspiration for all of your teachers and families here at PBS. I've talked about that before, too. There are many different ways to talk about agency, about your drive and your passion for your learning. I have three. The first is that you need self-confidence. You need self-confidence so that you can show agency in your learning. It's true and real student agency. Sometimes self-confidence gets a bad reputation. When I was in school, I remember my family's concern that too much self-confidence can lead to pride, like feeling too good about myself, or being puffed up, or bragging. That's not the purpose. That was a really important perspective to share, although I must tell you, I need a lot more self-confidence than pride to be your head of school. So I recently got a boost in my self-confidence. I'd like to share that with you. The fifth grade invited me to write a personal narrative, a paper. We had a workshop where we read each other's papers. We shared comments about them when we read them. Here are some fifth grade student comments about my writing. The first student said this, nice paragraphing. I wish I could do that myself. Actually, I read that student's paper and he does an awesome job with paragraphing. Here's what another student said about my writing. I like the way you use really juicy words. Now, what I wish is that my professor would have said that about my doctoral dissertation. Here's one from a student philosopher. Your paper changed my outlook on teaching for the better. You see, my paper was a personal statement about teaching and being a school leader, and it happens to be the very same personal essay that I wrote when I applied for and got this job 10 years ago. Pretty cool. Yeah, and I got the job, right? Okay, now, there's one more I want to share with you. This is what another student said. She said this, you really elaborated and gave me an idea about what you need to do to be a head of school. I think you do all these things. No wonder you're our head of school. So friends, if we had a swimming pool at PBS, if we did, guess what? I would have been walking on water after being in that class with those fifth graders. Thank you fifth graders for teaching me self-confidence. Now there's another good balance Pay attention, there's something else. There's a good balance to self-confidence, and that's self-control. You could call self-control self-regulation. You could call it being a good self-manager. Professor Mark Brackett from Yale recently wrote a book called Permission 
to feel. Permission to feel. His point is that rather than avoiding our emotions, rather than avoiding our feelings, rather than judging our feelings or emotions, we instead need to be emotion scientists. Scientists of the emotions. Emotion scientists who learn to embrace our feelings, who are eager to learn about our feelings and emotions and how they work. We need to understand them. And here's the point. We need to learn how to manage our feelings and emotions. When I showed this book to the fourth graders when I was over there once, one of these fourth graders said, Professor Mark Brackett, is that the mood meter guy? Yes, he's the mood meter guy. He has been to PBS to share the mood meter with us, to help us become emotion scientists, to understand our emotions, to embrace them, to learn to manage these emotions. Imagine that. Self-confidence balanced with self-control. The best education that gives you the knowledge and the tools to be in the driver's seat of ed your education has to include self-confidence and it has to include self-control. Because if you cannot have self-control, you cannot be in the driver's seat for your learning. So we have agency, self-confidence, self-control, and now we have self-direction. I think that you will be an agent for your learning at PBS if you build more and more self-direction. This does not mean that classrooms are a free-for-all, where students are in charge of everything. No. In fact, the teachers are your leaders. They are your guides. They are in charge. It does not mean that you students are automatically the experts. You need to turn to your teachers to be the experts. So self-direction is something very different. It's simply like this. It's making your voices heard. It's making sure that you can be in the driver's seat for your learning, that you are the agent that are doing your part in your learning, because the teachers cannot teach if the students aren't taking the initiative. If the students aren't doing what teachers say and working with their teachers, then you will not be in the driver's seat for your learning, and there will be no learning. Your teachers cannot force you to learn. It's up to your self-direction. I have two examples of self-direction from PBS, examples of ways that you all are taking initiative to be self-directors of your learning. The first is that I recently received a diagram from some first graders. This diagram shared a vision for a redesign of a bathroom at PBS. Now, the good news here is that the teacher told me, their teacher said, this redesign to make the bathrooms better was totally, totally and entirely the self-direction of the students. Now, the teachers supported it, they guided it, they encouraged it. Yet I think it's really cool when the students at PBS are modeling self-direction and modeling agency at its best. The other story about self-direction is I just had a conversation with a teacher She's new to PBS, and she's passionate about teaching and developing solutions for our environment, making sure that we do our part as a school to tackle climate change. She modeled and practiced self-direction. She contacted the County Office of Sustainability to come to PBS and be part of a Connect. She wanted them to bring a fresh and assertive approach to help you be change makers, to help you be problem solvers, to help you find new solutions for the environment. That, my friends, is self-direction at its best. So students, your teachers are terrific. They're awesome. But they can only take your learning so far because at the end, your learning depends on knowledge and tools so that you're in the driver's seat. You need to be in the driver's seat of your learning. That is agency at its best. Self-confidence, self-control, self-direction. So when you go about your day today, I want you to be a student agent. And I want you to show us student agency at its best. Thank you.